Hey everyone, it's B, and you're listening to another episode of the In Your Feelings podcast. Before I get into this episode, I did just want to say a huge thank you to Thought Catalog and ShopCatalog.com for helping to make all of these episodes possible and for sponsoring the podcast. I feel so lucky to be able to have conversations like this and to work with my publishers who have helped me to put out all of my books and who have helped me to put my words into the world and who are now helping me to have these conversations with all of you in a more visual way on a different platform. So again, thank you so much to Thought Catalog. And also as a little reminder, my book, A Gentle Reminder, is finally back in stock and it is available for all of you to read. So I'll leave the link in the description box below or you can go find it through shopcatalog.com or through the link in my bio. And yeah, I hope you love it. All right, so for today's episode, I was inspired by a conversation I had with a friend recently. We were talking and she was kind of dealing with something that was feeling very heavy in her heart. She was venting to me and my other friend and she said something that really stuck with me, something that I have heard so many of you ask me in my DMs or in the messages and comments that I receive and that was that she felt very hopeless and she was talking about how she felt as if finding good love and very real and genuine love in this generation felt extremely disheartening and extremely discouraging based on the experiences she had had and the people she had tried to love. And I wanted to create a podcast episode. I know that I've talked about this on so many other occasions because This is a sentiment that so many of you feel. It's a sentiment that I have felt before. It is such a human thing to go through so many experiences at the hands of love and to become almost jaded or closed off or to question if it's ever going to happen to you. I know what it's like to get hurt and I know what it's like to have your heart questioned to the point where you start to question yourself and you start to question your worth or the validity of beautiful love in this world when you haven't felt it or it hasn't necessarily been protected in your life or you've never really seen or experienced an example of it it can be very easy to doubt that it's actually out there And I wanted to create a podcast episode that acted as a reminder to all of you that you do deserve to be loved and chosen and good love is out there and you don't have to settle for people who almost love you or almost choose you because you believe that that's all you're going to get. And so if that's what you're feeling right now, if you feel discouraged, if you feel disheartened, if you feel like you just need something to believe in, this is the episode for you. So firstly, I just want to remind you that you don't have to vilify yourself for being confused or for having doubt within your heart. I know that loving in this generation can be very difficult. I know that. I've been through that. I have literally held my friends' broken pieces back together. I have hugged them so tight while they were unraveling because they were so hurt at the hands of love. I get it. I get it. I know that the experience can leave you feeling very discouraged and you don't have to apologize for that. You don't have to apologize for the fact that you might be moving through life right now not necessarily believing in love or believing that you're going to find it. And you don't have to vilify yourself for that or or push yourself to just pretend like you're not feeling that way. I want you to give yourself permission to feel what you're feeling and to understand that it's not your fault. You didn't deserve to be treated the way you were treated. You didn't deserve for the things that happened to you, for the people that you love to treat you in the way that they did. You didn't deserve for all of the experiences that almost like weathered your heart to occur. You can't control the way people love you in this life. You can't 
control the way they leave. You can't control how much they respect you or how much they're willing to give you. All you can do is love other human beings. Love is meant to be felt and not possessed and you can't nip and tuck at it until it is this perfect version of what you want because it requires another human being to show up within what you are giving and what you are showing up for as well. And so you can't control the way you've been treated. It's not your fault the way that other people have come into your life and crashed their hearts into yours and maybe not treated you as beautifully as you deserve to be treated. It's not your fault. And while it happened, you didn't deserve for that to happen to you. And so I understand why you might be sitting here or you might be listening to this feeling sadness over the fact that you used to be so hopeful in love and now you're not. I understand. And I know what it's like to almost want to close yourself off to all of the potential that you have yet to feel. I know what it's like to have someone say, well, it's out there, just believe in it. So much is waiting to conspire in your life. So much is waiting to just like crack within your life. You're going to feel the deepest kind of love. I know what it's like to hear that and to almost like roll your eyes and to question it based on what you've been through. I know what it's like to be in that position. And it takes a lot of blind faith in a way, a lot of unlearning, all of the stories and the narratives that you've told yourself, all of the ways in which you've convinced yourself that you are not worthy or that it was your fault or that you are too much. It takes a lot of letting go of the past and understanding that your future genuinely does have a lot of beauty waiting for you in it. And so when these negative thoughts come up, when you do start to doubt if you are worthy of love or if it is going to find you, when you do start to question your capacity to feel it, when you do start to look at love negatively and say, I can't put myself out there. What if I get hurt? I want you to reframe that question. Whenever that thought comes into your mind, I also want you to ask yourself, well, what if it goes right? You know, because you can absolutely put yourself out there. You can put your whole heart into someone else's hands and they can drop it and they can mistreat it. You can try so hard for someone. You can give them so much. You can give them everything you have within yourself and they can still walk away. You can still lose that love. You can still be hurt. That is always an option. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that every single person who comes into your life is going to be the right person, is going to know how to hold you on your hardest days. That's just not the truth. But you could also put yourself out there and have someone meet you in the most beautiful way. What if it goes wrong? Yes, but what if it goes right? What if you're vulnerable and you crash your heart into a human being who teaches you that love was always meant to be soft and tender and kind? What if you are treated right? What if you actually take the chance and you are met there? What if you put your heart into this world and someone shows up to hold it? What if you just try and you meet the person who you have always been waiting for? And all of those past human beings, all of the people who could not hold your heart, all of the people who mistreated you, all of the people who made you doubt yourself, it all makes so much sense because it was leading you to this moment. And in this moment, you are sleeping beside someone who makes you feel the softest, most tender kind of beauty, a beauty you never thought existed, and a beauty you never would have felt if you had stopped yourself from trying, if you had genuinely closed yourself off. And so this is your reminder to stay open. Yes, you can protect yourself from potential pain and hurt. You can protect yourself from risk, but that also means that you're closing yourself off to potential beauty and potential hope and potential love. So stay open and stay hopeful within that. Yes, you might put yourself out there and get hurt, but try to reframe that thinking and try to remind yourself that yes, you might put yourself out there and you might get held. 
Okay. <laughs> I think I genuinely black out when I talk about a lot of this stuff, especially within this topic. Anyone who's been following this podcast for a while knows that I genuinely believe in the most beautiful kind of love, even though I haven't necessarily experienced it for myself. I am so deeply hopeful because, and here's my second point, good love exists due to the fact that you exist. Good love exists because you have the kind of heart that you are searching for. And what I mean by that is, think about all of the ways in which you want to love another human being. Think about all of the ways you want to care for someone, all of the ways you want to put your heart out into the world. I really want you to think about all of the ways you are excited to show up for someone, bringing them soup when they're sick or hugging them for 20 minutes straight or anything along those lines, those hopes that you have, the way that you envision loving and caring and growing with someone for the rest of your life or for however long <laughs> you plan to love someone. Think about how your heart just leaps towards that how excited you get, how much hope it brings you, how much you have to give. And then really think about the fact that there are so many other human beings just like you in this world. It is literally impossible to assume that no one else like you exists here, that no one else hopes to care for another human being in the way that you hope to care for another human being. The fact that you have a heart that cares the way it does is a testament to the fact that that kind of love and that kind of care exists in this world. It would be scientifically, I mean that's not proven, don't quote me on that, there's no empirical evidence related to this, <laughs> but on, on the deepest level there is, there is no way, at least this is what I believe, there's absolutely no way that there aren't human beings who want to love you the way that you want to love them in this world who are dreaming for the same things you dream of, who are just waiting for the moment that they can crash their whole soul into another human being. If you believe that, if you trust in that, if that is what your heart leaps towards, then isn't it almost ridiculous to assume that love doesn't exist in this generation or this world? Because that is discounting the fact that there are other people who feel the things that you feel. And that's why I put these episodes out, and that's why I put the writing I put out, and that's why my poetry is, is so hopeful and, and blindly optimistic sometimes, because I don't want to live in a world where I am the sole person who has a heart like this. It doesn't make sense in my head. If you look at the comments on these YouTube videos, or if you look at the comments on my Instagram posts, you will see thousands and thousands and thousands of people talking about how they relate to the sentiments I put out into the world and how they relate to believing in that kind of love. People will have conversations with me relative to the fact that they are so hopeful that they know that once they find the right person, they are going to be able to love them so beautifully and so softly. And that is a testament and a representation of the potential that exists in this world. You are not alone in, in how you want to love. You are not alone in the way that your heart expresses itself. And you may not have ever met someone who resonates with you or who understands the language your heart speaks. But the fact that you exist the way that you do is a representation of the rest of the world. And so this is your reminder that others like you exist. And if others like you exist, that means that good love is waiting to be found in this world, that there are other human beings who will love you and care for you the way that you have always shown up to love and care for others. The people who left your life, the people who could not choose you, the people who could not match your energy or love you in a very compassionate and tender way, they were always going to be the wrong people and they were never meant to love you or hold you or be these long-lasting chapters in your life. 
sometimes despite the fact that we feel something very deep and very meaningful with someone does not mean that they are meant to stay in our lives. And the things that never came to fruition, the things that never fought for you the way that you fought for them, they were never meant to stay in your life. They were never meant to hold you and to love you. You had to go through those things and grow through those things. I will always say this, love is never wasted. It is always an experience that will help to push you forward, even if it wasn't necessarily the most tender of experiences. You didn't deserve to be hurt and you didn't deserve to be mistreated. That's not what I mean when I say that. But at the end of the day, if we can pull a lesson or if we can pull strength from the things and the experiences that have happened to us, we can move forward in the direction of things that are actually meant for us. We learn and we really teach ourselves the kind of love that we want on a foundational level. If we know what we do not want to feel again, when it comes up in our lives in the future, we can walk away from it and we cannot choose it and we cannot grip at it and we can say, you know what? I don't want to feel this again. This feels extremely familiar and I know what that did to me. I know how much that hurt. I deserve more than this. And so the things that never came to fruition in your life, we have to let them go. We have to let the past be in the past and move forward towards a future where we are protecting our hearts and defending what we deserve. And I know how easy it is to grip at these people, how easy it is to be so attached to wanting love and so attached to the potential that we see in another human being. This is something <laughs> that took me a very long time to learn, but love is not meant to be pain. Love is not meant to be confusing. If you are constantly left doubting yourself or questioning your heart or just wishing that someone could change, just wishing that someone could meet you where you are. If this is the kind of person who is constantly leaving you confused, who is constantly making you feel like you are in a dark place, who is constantly mistreating your heart or hurting you, I promise you that is not your person. And I know what it's like to think, well, maybe if they change, maybe if I just like give more or show up more or if I'm cooler or prettier if I do this or do that maybe maybe one day they'll meet me where I am you cannot think like that I promise you will be waiting your whole life people actionably show you who they are every single day love my friend says this all the time to me love has survived war <laughs> love has survived distance Love has survived every single circumstance that is thrown its way. And if someone loves you, they will show up within that love and they will fight for you. They really genuinely will. And so if someone is mistreating you, if someone is hurting you, if someone cannot choose you, you have to let that go instead of wishing and waiting on that potential. Because can you imagine waiting around for someone who never changes? or staying in a situation or a connection that is constantly hurting you? Can you imagine if things don't change? If this person never meets their potential and you've waited so many years and you were constantly hurt every single day, you were constantly in this space of doubt and confusion. Can you imagine how disappointing that would be? how disheartening life would feel. You deserve to have your heart held. You deserve to have your heart held. You deserve to wake up beside someone happy. <laughs> that is what love is meant to be. Love is not meant to be pain. Love is not meant to be hurt. You have to love someone as they are in a moment. And if that person is not able to choose you, then you really genuinely have to let go. You have to hope that there is more for you. You have to believe in the part of yourself that 
longs for a love that is very different and very real and very pointed versus the kind of love that you're experiencing right now, which is just causing you so much pain. I promise that love is not pain. And also within that note, can you imagine living your whole life being loved in halves? Can you imagine living your whole life questioning the person you were sleeping beside? And that's what you have to think of. If someone can't show up for you now, you cannot expect them to miraculously learn how to love you or hold you or care for you in the future. You have to really think about what you want for yourself and what you want for your heart. Because your person is, is going to be your person for the rest of your life, if that's what you want. And they're going to be your person, not just when it's shiny and beautiful and you're young and hope is like springing from your fingertips, but this is going to be your person when things get really hard. Because life does get really hard at times. You may not have experienced that yet, but I promise it happens. And, you know, we move forward and we heal and we grow, but none of us come out of this life unscathed. So many circumstances arise where you just need someone by your side holding your hand. So many things can occur in life that really show you who will care for you in the right ways. And you want to make sure that you're surrounding yourself and choosing the kinds of human beings who are showing you that they're ready to show up for you and that they're ready to choose you and that they're going to love you when you are virtuous and, and bright and the sun is shining out of your heart and also when you are in a dark and haunted place, when you get sick or when you need someone to just like hug your broken pieces back together. You want someone who's going to show up for you in those moments too. You want something that is whole and full and tender, something that knows you and learns you and wants to grow and heal beside you. And if someone can't even respond to a text message, if someone is never showing up in the way that you are just like begging for them to show up, if someone makes you feel confused, if someone is constantly hurting you, what makes you think that in the future they are going to be able to be that person for you? You have to let go, you have to stop gripping, and you have to stop choosing people who are no longer choosing you. You can fight all you want, but if the other person is not fighting for you, then you are not fighting for anything worthwhile. And I know how hard that is to come to terms with, but I promise that if you just continue telling yourself, I deserve something real. I deserve the same kind of love that I am so willing to give others. I want good people beside me for the rest of my life. And I am choosing this in this moment every single day. If you repeat that to yourself day after day, I promise that the right things will find you. Okay, I, I just want to finish off this podcast by talking about the kind of love that I have seen in this world, the kind of love that is a genuine example in my head that keeps me hopeful and that keeps me believing in the fact that something very good exists when it comes to matters of the heart. And I've talked about this before on the podcast, but I just think it would be perfect for this episode. It's about my mom and my dad. The love that I saw between my mother and my father growing up was very beautiful. They were friends. They supported each other. They were always a team. It was only when my mom got sick that I really started to understand pragmatic love, though very, very genuine and, and deep love. My mother looked to my father every single day as this guiding light, this beacon of hope for her. Him being beside her brought her strength. Him being beside her and holding her hand and telling her that it was going to be okay brought her strength. 
And it made me realize I had been choosing all of the wrong people in my life. I had been gripping at the wrong kind of, of emotion and, and love in this world. I had been searching in all of the wrong places and I had been trying to fit my heart into, like if my heart was a triangle, I was trying to squish it into like a square hole. I was just trying to make it work because I had so much to give. And when I saw the way my dad loved my mom through her sickness up until the very last breath she took, it like smacked me in the face. That's what I want. That is the kind of love that I am searching for in this world. Someone who is by my side during the hardest and absolute darkest moments of my life when I can't do anything for them. Someone who wants to literally carry me down the stairs so I can sit outside on my last few days. Someone who wants to hold my hand when I'm scared. Someone who wants to tell me that everything is gonna be okay. Someone who is there for me, not when I am perfect and not when I am less and not when I am, am as light as I possibly could be, but when I am in the heaviness, when life gets really scary, when life gets really hard, you want that kind of person by your side. Someone who is choosing you, someone who is sure of you, someone who just wants to make you feel cared for and held and seen. It makes me cry because it was literally, I wish that I could replay it like a movie for all of you right now. But trust me when I say it was the most beautiful thing that ever came from that experience, seeing that kind of love in front of me, seeing the way it was protected, the way it was shown up for, it was so deeply beautiful. It meant so much to me. Because in that moment, I said, you know what? I will never settle for anything less than this moving forward. I will never settle for being confused. I will never settle for feeling like I have to be less in order to impress someone. I will never settle for being the person who gives and gives and gives and is exhausted and, and is never cared for in the same way that they care for others. I will never settle for giving my heart to people and just trying to convince them to hold it. I will never settle for being almost chosen because I saw with my own two eyes what it actually means to be chosen. And that is what I move forward believing in. And so if any of you are having doubt, if any of you are really questioning if pragmatic, kind, rooted, and tender love exists in this world, if you don't have an example like that in your life, if you've never seen it with your own two eyes, if you've never been in that energy and that presence, I am telling you to trust me. I promise from like the deepest <laughs> part of my soul that it exists out there for you. It is real and it is something that is attainable and you have to keep your heart open to it. Do not close your heart off to that potential. Continue to believe in it and I promise, I promise it will come. It exists and if there is anything you get from this podcast episode, it is that I just hope you continue to search for it. All right, that is all I have for you today. I really hope that this podcast episode helped to empower you in choosing your own heart and in understanding that you genuinely deeply deserve to be chosen the way that you choose others. As I said, you deserve to be loved and chosen, not almost loved and almost chosen. And I hope you move forward after listening to this, knowing that good love exists. Stand up for it every single day. Put your heart into this world, but also defend what you believe in because it's out there. So until next time, I hope you know that you are so loved and I hope you have a beautiful day. Thank you.